Hi, everybody. Today, I'd like to speak about the Shostakovich uh, Piano and Cello Sonata, Opus 40. Um, great, great sonata that many of us uh, perform regularly. Um, notice that the first and third movements are exact uh, metronome markings, same metronome markings, as well as the second and fourth movement. The first movement is um, <clears throat> 138, but if you uh, put the metronome on the half note, it is 69 for the half note, and that's the way is uh, best to practice it, in my opinion. Uh, when you practice it uh, with 4-4, four, four, it tends to sound too beaty. Um, so I put the metronome on 69. Um, <clears throat> generally, this movement is pretty straightforward in terms of rubati. Um, and uh, I would stick to the metronome uh, more or less. And uh, let's look at the very beginning. Um, <clears throat> we have the melody, the cello has a melody. And um, the mood here, in my opinion, is it's lyrical. Um, and uh, I would start with a fairly narrow vibrato, short vibrato, and not too sluggish. Um, we see a piano, and a lot of us tend to wobble, start um, playing a slow vibrato. But um, this has an inner tension that I like to bring out. So. The cello and piano take turns presenting the themes uh, and accompanying each other. So in bar 16, listen to the piano. It has the theme and we accompany. Um, and so your ear should be half there with a the pianist and half with yourself, but not uh, don't indulge in this. Uh, <laughs> that's not very interesting. Um, in bar 54, the second subject appears in the piano, and our turn comes in bar 71. Um, you and your pianist will have to agree on how to play these themes and also how to accompany them. There are intervals that keep coming back throughout the whole sonata. Uh, for example, a descending fourth. Uh, here we have, um, this is a fifth, a sixth, and then a fourth. I, I like going to the D string for that fourth. Another uh, color, interesting color, is uh, a beat to bar nine. Um, so if we compare this uh, uh, G to F, um, which comes against the uh, dissonance in the piano, um, we compare this one tone, whole tone, uh, G to F, to the beginning, A to G. So this one is uh, kind of straightforward. And this one has more tension. And if you look at the score and uh, try to play the left hand of the piano with yourself, um, you will see why this G to F is, has more tension, uh, because we are uh, in a dissonance with the piano. So I would encourage you to work with the score when you are practicing by yourself, and even play the left hand of the piano with the cello part. So here, if we look at the beginning, we have D. So. It's pretty easy to, to do that, um, and you can feel the harmony much better this way. Um, when we get to... So the E in the piano clashes with our F, and this is a special color that we're looking for. And again, C in the piano against the E. Um, when we are uh, playing those octaves, and the piano has da 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 da, um, 
it's um, it would be smart, I think, to change to the first finger one bar before we have to hit that high C. So. <laughs> So I change from 4-1, uh, in other words, I prepare uh, the position, the new position, uh, one bar before um, 70, uh, sorry, one bar before 31. So bar 30, I change my fingering, so I'm in position for the C. Pay attention to the short, long gesture that keeps coming back. Um, this uh, so short long short long this is borrowed uh, taken from the very beginning where we had so short long uh, again here short long um, and also don't forget that we are accompanying the piano here the piano has the melody that we have in bar um, 71. The rhythmic motif uh, that starts the development section um, is also short, long, short, long. Um, and these are one of the ways that Shostakovich unifies uh, this movement. Um, <clears throat> this particular motif was introduced uh, in the piano part in bar 107. And again, uh, work with the pianist and see if you can uh, hear each, each other and match, match that particular gesture. Um, <clears throat> perhaps ask your pianist to play it and imitate it. Uh, when we play together in rehearsal, sometimes we are very occupied with what we're doing. We don't have time to really stop and listen very carefully to what our partners do. The recapitulation starting in bar 196 uh, has a very uh, different feel than the beginning. Here we see a glimpse of what is coming in the third movement. Uh, another, in my opinion, another uh, unifying aspect to this whole sonata besides the metronome markings um, <coughs> and the, the, some of the themes that he reworked. Um, and so, yeah, those bleak expanses of Russia covered with snow. So those last five pizzicati before the end can be interpreted as uh, faraway gunshots and um, followed by death, followed by, again, the vast expanses of snow, Russian snow. So uh, very dry. Um, this whole uh, recapitulation is obviously uh, not a regular recapitulation. It has an extremely different feel than the exposition. Um, I wouldn't play it dead. I would add vibrato, but it is very static. Um, and 50 is a very slow tempo marking, so I take it a notch faster. But you can certainly practice that way and see if it works for you. I think it can be very uh, effective, very slow. <clears throat> and uh, this is it for today for this movement. I'll see you next time with the second movement. <laughs>